What is up? It's the Fake Gear Hunter, and for review today is the Whoop 4.0 Heart Rate Accuracy When Worn on the Forearm. I've tested this a couple different ways on the forearm, and I've worn it there for quite a number of workouts. I absolutely hate the way it feels on the forearm, but I want to give all the viewers all the accuracy details they can get. This is purposeful for testing and tracking the heart rate accuracy of the Whoop device for CrossFit training and high intensity interval training. So everything on the channel is for testing devices for CrossFit. Whoop is the official wearable of CrossFit. And the biggest thing, the reason I sent the 2.0 and the 3.0 back was because the heart rate accuracy was not adequate for keeping up with a, a, a CrossFit workout in the highest level of heart rate zones, which it creates the highest level of strain, which creates the highest level of strain score, which flows into all the data. Now, this is the final heart rate testing. I am partnering with the 5K runner to do, you know, like more of a comprehensive review. So I'm gonna do a video review. They're gonna do a written review. And, you know, I think they're getting their device a little bit later than I am. So it'll be sort of like in tandem, you'll see my videos and then later on you'll see their written content and get different perspectives from a runner's perspective and me from a CrossFit sort of weightlifting high intensity interval perspective. So with the results so far, so on the wrist, when worn on the wrist, 60% accurate across eight different workouts. The full review is in the description below. So not accurate, so that means it's missing 40%. It is definitely better than it was because the 3.0 was much worse than that, but 60% accurate is not adequate enough. Worn on the bicep, 95% accurate. That is fantastic in general terms. So the simple answer, at least from those first two tests is you have to wear it on the bicep if you want the data to be any accurate. And WHOOP is purely a data device and data results. So why question? So I'm wearing it on the forearm. I did have to use my bicep band. So side note, if you have a bicep band, why not just wear it on the bicep? Why wear it on the forearm? Unless you're sort of crazy about forearm experiences. So I had to wear it on the bicep. Couldn't get the wrist strap to stretch long enough to wear it on the forearm. So. You had to get the bicep. So when we're tech, what's the method of testing? We're gonna look at the charts, the overlay of the heart rate graph of the chest strap, which will be in red in the heart rate graph. And I'm using the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is the most accurate. And the heart rate graph in light blue of the WHOOP, we'll see how it did in the warm up and lifting portions and how it did in the Metcon and intense portions. Just get sort of a feel for what we think of the accuracy just by looking at the charts. And then we're gonna look at the um, analytical percentage of accuracy when it compares in three ways. One, the average heart rate above 80%. So we're cutting out the bottom 80% of the heart rate score and we're just getting the percent average accuracy above 80%. Secondly, the zone four and five, 80 to 100% of your maximum heart rate because that is where your biggest strain cardiovascular wise is calculated. And then the last and most rigorous is the zone five only, the 90 to 100% of heart rate maximum. So we'll see the charts, we'll see the results, and then we'll come back together and talk about it. So let's dive in. All right, so here we are, folks. I, in the first couple workouts, I still separated out the warm up and lift coupled with the Metcon on the end. So we'll just sort of continue to see how that is. You can see the lifting, it just, it doesn't do well with very short term fluctuations in heart rate. So you see a lag on the end. I don't really care about the lags in any of these. So the red is the chest strap, the blue is the whoop. Lags don't matter to me if it's still capturing the same overall surface area because that's the time spent in the higher zones. And for whatever reason, it was faster or was higher in the short, in the beginning of that other one. So here is every 10 minutes you did this blitz. It was like, it was like 12, nine, six, 15, 12, nine, 18, 15, 12 um, of snatches and burpee box jump overs. And so you'd have whatever time remaining of the 10 minutes. So you'd see this blitz and you see the fall. Here's where it really didn't pick up. I do think this is where the, the, the device was getting caught in the corner of my elbow because I had it on the inside and it was, I think, getting squished in the burpee box jump over. So in the results there, 71% accurate on the average heart rate, 52% on the four and five, that's terrible. And then 12 on the zone five, really, really terrible. So then we have a battery starting to go out on my uh, H10, which I replaced later. But if you just take out the blips, you can see it's a little bit smoother ride and you can see that it kept up incredibly well. This is, you know, a, a coupling of the whole entire workout, dumbbell squats, headstand push-ups, farmer carry, air squats, and dumbbell shoulder to overhead. 
Ironically, I had it on the inside of my uh, forearm and it actually kept up fine, although it left a significant red mark um, when I did that. 100% average heart rate, 92% on the zone four and five, and I didn't quite get into that because I kept breaking down on the headstand pushups. One rat max deadlift in the beginning, you can see on this lifting portion, it looks okay. It doesn't pick up the peaks, doesn't fluctuate as much, but again, if strain is calculated off cardiovascular load and strain, then we wanna make sure this last portion is correct. So these were intervals. You basically got two minutes to work, one minute off, and you had to get through a certain number of bike meters, row meters, and then a hundred toes to bar at the end. It just didn't quite keep up on the toes to bar for whatever reason. So you see 96, 97% accurate heart rate um, on the average. Zone four and five, 80 to 100% of maximum, 96. That's great. Zone five just didn't capture because there really wasn't a whole lot of time spent up there and it just didn't peak high enough. So here you see uh, another failure. So you can see slightly a failure on the lifting section where it just sort of floats along the middle instead of picking up these variations in heart rate. Um, so this was a couple different max out just because it was a max out week. And then this was, sorry to move around so much, everybody's getting sick watching. So um, AMRAP of strict dips, double unders, single arm dumbbell snatches. And you can see it was peaking and the, you know, on the forearm was failing on the whoop. So you see 99% accurate on the average heart rate, 17% accurate in four and five, and then it just, you know, didn't get up there in zone five. So six by four back squat, you can see again, if you look at the lifting portion, the whoop is just flowing across the top of the heart rate zone instead of fluctuating down, because I did sort of shorter breaks between the six by four on the back squat. And then you see in the last part, it was 10, seven, four, as far as an AMRAP, the three minute rest after of chest to bar, hang power cleans and bike. So max meters on the bike on the tail end of whatever time you had left. And it, it did fine on, the, on most of the workout in the Metcon. You can see that it missed the first peak and it missed the second. So we see the results here, 97% accurate on average heart rate, 73% accurate on zone four and five. And then for whatever reason, it did actually capture the highest level zones at 90%. So strict push-ups, uh, strict pull-ups and deficit push-ups. So just rotating rounds of that. And then five by three, we'll look at the Metcon in a second. You can see it just sort of hovers around the bottom. It doesn't keep quite the flow. And you, you see the sort of same pattern I don't really care that much about this because the whole point of the strain score, which is what you're gonna get out of the whoop, is just to calculate overall cardiovascular strain. You're basically getting the strain from this lifting and warm up session. The biggest, most important part is the Metcon session. So you can see that it missed the first. Here's where I actually had it on the inside of the forearm and then I moved it to the outside of the forearm after the halfway through the second round. It was basically three minute AMRAP with a one minute rest, five minute, uh, five round repeats. So you can see it captured the last portions. This is on the outside of the forearm, which now realize is the only place to wear it. So you can see, you know, in general, it's still, again, percentage wise, 94% average heart rate, 99.5 zone four and five and 91.1 on zone five. So again, those fluctuations in the lifting section, I think are not statistically relevant because it is giving you a strain score just about how much time you spent in strain zones. And so I think that the average here is still accurate for correct data that you're getting from it. So the final scores, looking down across it. So the average heart rate, really good, all green, zone five, lots of red so the highest level of strain it is not quite keeping up with now there were two workouts where it was negligible so we didn't have his number of test cases so let's look at zone four and five 80 to 100 percent of max heart rate you see two big f's and so i'm going to run this statistically a different way after we look at the final result in this first round so 52 percent accurate 17 percent accurate on one of those workouts is total failure but 90s the rest of the time so if you look at the average heart rate 97 percent accurate and then a it's sort of a goose egg on the zone five, although we had two workouts that didn't have any results to it. So it's just really an average of four workouts and then zone four and five, giving you a final result of 66%. Now, I don't like the statistical anomalies of what would probably have been the location of the device. Those two failures, I think are location-based because I think 
I was having a little more consistency and wearing on the outside of the forearm. So if I take those two out so that we have a little bit more statistical relevance, you see a lot better numbers. You still have a zone five failure in that middle. And that was a workout where it wasn't stressing or straining the uh, bend in the arm. So you have 98% accurate on the average, 62% accurate on the zone five and 95 on 94 and a half on zone four and five, giving you a final analysis of 78.9 or 79%. This I feel like is worthwhile. That's a worthwhile number, but it's only really a decent number. It's not fantastic. It's not super great. You're still missing 20% of the strain. So if you have to buy a bicep band in order to get it around your forearm, then roll it all the way up to the bicep and you'll be okay. And there you see it folks, 78% accurate if we cut out those two bottom because I did wear it on the inside because I thought, oh, that's more vascular, there's less hair there. But I really do believe, and it did not feel comfortable when I was doing shoulder to overhead, I felt it crushing the device into the crevice of my elbow. So not a good idea. So I wore it on the outside, I did have more consistency. We dropped the worst two workouts and still 78% where it was like 65% before with all the workouts combined. So wear it on the outside if you do feel like you just have to wear it on the forearm even though you're gonna buy a bicep band and probably should just wear it on the bicep because then it's a lot more simple and the accuracy is higher anyway. So hey, but you have to get the bicep band. I definitely did not feel comfortable. I cannot wait to finish this review so I can take it off and put on the wrist strap and stay tuned for more because I'm not doing any extra testing on the heart rate accuracy and I'll tell you why in my full review coming out in the next few days because I only have a few days left to get it out. That's a little plug for what I'm gonna be sharing. So anyway, the full full review is coming out soon. I'm gonna be partnering again with the 5K Runner. Make sure to pay attention to their full written review down the, down the road. I have all the previous videos in the description below and more is yet to come. I just don't know when the Oura Ring's gonna ship, but someday soon, hopefully. I just did my Christmas buying guide review posted yesterday. So stay tuned for more. So Figure Hunter, thanks so much for watching.